Hi and welcome back everybody to another reaction video where we try to learn something new and to spread history on YouTube. So today we're going to react to the video called Talvisota, The Winter War from the channel Sabaton History. As always, the original video is going to be in the description below. Uh, go give them a like and a view. Um, so it's a topic that I really like and I uh, researched a lot uh, during my studies and it's about the war between the Soviet Union and Finland. Soviet Union a much much bigger country than Finland and had also a bigger army than Finland uh, back then uh, so the war was in 1939-40 uh, 1939-1940 so it lasted uh, approximately three months, a little bit, a little bit more than three months, and it's a complicated topic, uh, but it's uh, a really important topic for that uh, period in history, and it had also big consequences uh, regarding the German invasion of the Soviet Union, and uh, as always, I'm going to give my commentary and thoughts during this video, so um, if you want me to react to a historic history video uh, that you like, please put the video in the comment section below. And um, if you want to support uh, my work uh, and the projects that I'm going to do in the future, uh, please hit the subscribe button with the bell thingy and you can also subscribe to my Patreon account and it's going to be in the description below. So let's just jump in into the video. Oh, and Indy Nidell, I love him. He goes, uh, in his videos and his channels, he has a few channels on YouTube. He goes very uh, in, uh, into details and I love, love his channels and his videos. So uh, let's just jump in. Indy Nidell. I'm Indy Nidell. And I'm Joachim from Sabaton, and this is Sabaton History. The so and this is actually my first time that I'm watching a video from this channel. And cool intro. The Soviet Red Army invaded Finland in late 1939 and the Winter War had begun. The Soviets thought the war would be over in a matter of weeks, if not days, but they were wrong, as the Finnish defenders surprised the world with their tenacity. And our yeah. song Talvisota. It's a tribute to Finnish Sisu. What does Talvisota mean? If there's any Finn that's watching, please translate Talvisota. And if I pronounce something incorrectly, please don't kill me. Uh, I am from a totally other like language family group. So the Slavic one, South Slavic. So please don't kill me if I pronounce something incorrectly. International observers had a hard time finding a war that seemed more one-sided. The military might of the Soviet Union versus little Finland with a population of some 3.65 million. Without modern equipment, without tanks or even allies, the Finnish seemed doomed from the start as Soviet troops crossed the border November 30th, 1939, starting what the Finns called Talvisota, Winter War. Oh, so that's actually the Finnish uh, version or the Finnish word for the Winter War, okay. Finland had a troubled history with Russia. Its declaration of independence from the Russian Empire in December 1917 led to a brutal civil war between the, the right-wing whites and, and Bolshevik the white. Reds. Yeah. This was also a cultural war in which the Finnish nationalistic elements fought against the supporters of Russian influence. This resentment lingered in the Finnish conscience well into the late 1930s when war again loomed across the European continent. And also one of the leaders uh, uh, of the White Army, so the ones who wanted to separate from the Russians, uh, was Gustav Mannerheim. He's probably going to mention him. And he would lead the Finnish army during the Winter War, so during the Talvisotta. And uh, there is also 
a line that was formed, a defensive line in Finland, in the Finnish territory called Karelia, uh, in the south, so which was bordering the, so the Soviet Union, and that was the main defensive line of the Finns, because that was actually a, uh, a di direct route, or the fastest way for the Soviets to break through and come to the to Helsinki, to the capital of Finland. But they're probably going to mention Gustav Mannerheim and the Mannerheim line. There were plenty of people who believed that the antagonistic ideologies of Nazi Germany and the Soviet Union would eventually lead to war between the two, and that Finland may play a role in that future war. In the event of such a war, Joseph Stalin was concerned since the Finnish border was not even 30 kilometers away from Leningrad and the Finnish batteries in the Gulf of... Today, St. Petersburg. And uh, as I told you in a previous video, uh, that was his real concern because Stalin always thought uh, small uh, nations or small states aren't truly independent and they're always uh, under influence of big powers so eventually Finland will join either the Brits or the Germans or, or whoever, but he thought that they are going to um, join the Germans and then they would invade the Soviet Union and then St. Petersburg or Leningrad would be defenseless. So he wanted this part uh, where Vipur, uh, Vipur v or Vipuri, uh, I always forget how to pronounce it in Finnish. But this part is Karelia, and in that part, uh, the, the most battles and the astonishing things that the Finns did happened. Finland could threaten Soviet shipping in the Baltic Sea. Now, during the Great War, some Finns had quite close contact with the Germans, and there was even a Finnish Jäger battalion that saw action with the German army. Stalin saw this possible connection as a real threat, even as the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact went into effect in the wake of German and Soviet invasions of Poland. They partitioned Poland. Yeah, and as I said, uh, you're, you're, he's probably going to mention the, the annexation of the Baltic states, so Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia. And uh, uh, a good uh, historian regarding Stalin is the American historian, uh, oh God, I forgot his name, but I'm going to put it later in the description below, uh, his name in one of his videos or lectures where he said like Stalin was really concerned about Finland. So it wasn't like, hmm, let's play some mind games and so on, but he was really concerned regarding Finland. Finland and no buffer state between the two powers any longer existed. So Stalin secured a military presence in Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania, just in case. Finland, who declared itself neutral, was next. Soviet Foreign Minister Vyacheslav Molotov presented demands to the Finns that included moving the border further away from Leningrad, which would also involve the Finns giving up their entire defensive line against the Soviets, and the Finns having to relocate up to 10% of their population, leasing the Soviets Hanko Peninsula to use as a military base and giving them the Rybaki Peninsula, which Stalin wanted for the nickel mines up there. I talked about all of this week by week on my World War II channel, where you can get all of the details. But long story short, the Finns said no way, and the Red Army invaded Finland at points along the entire border. Winter had already begun, and it would become... Uh, just something about the territory. Uh, as I said, Stalin was sincere he really wanted that territory to defend himself but because of his reputations uh, his reputation the Finns didn't trust him so they thought if they give up their defensive lines as you saw on the Karelia uh, part of Finland uh, then they would be defenseless plus uh, Stalin had such a reputation that uh, he uh, that they thought that he's going to just conquer them and yeah one of the coldest in recorded history 
Baron Field yep. Marshal Carl Gustav Emil Mannerheim came out of retirement to take overall command of the Finnish army and knew that the key to the defense of Finland was the Karelian Isthmus, the narrow strip of land between the Gulf of Finland and Lake Ladoga. Since 1932, Ladoga. they had prepared strong lines of defense there between the lakes and marshes, the defenses I mentioned earlier. And yeah, uh, something else regarding the, 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 the territory, the Finnish politicians even if they wanted to, couldn't secede land to the Soviets because of the Finnish constitution, which prohibits to uh, to to give up land, and the uh, and the Russians, the Soviets, uh, even wanted to trade land. So they didn't want just to receive land from the Finns, but they wanted to exchange some parts of the Soviet territory in the north for the Karelia Peninsula and. Uh, the Karelia part and the islands. Which the Russian troops now had to attack head on. The boggy ground was no good for Soviet tanks and artillery to cross, and the areas they could cross had been extensively mined by the Finns. The Finnish army was small, yet was strongly motivated by patriotic fervor. They could mobilize... The, ter the two terms that you need to know when you talk about the the winter war the two finnish terms you need to know is sisu and motti sisu um as i discussed with some some of you in the comment sections below there isn't a a good translation into english or german and i know as a croatian how it feels when you cannot translate something correctly in, in a in one of the big languages but it's something like to have the, the courage to, to go on when it's hard. When all the odds are against you, but you just keep on moving and pushing. And Moti is a tactic, uh, that they're probably going to mention it. And Moti is a tactic that the Finns used, so they were overpowered. So, so, so the Soviets had more manpower, uh, tanks and everything. But uh, the Finns had uh, the advantage that they knew the territory uh, and they were highly mobile with their skis, with their skis. Uh, they uh, were trained um, to use rifles like uh, snipers when they uh, like hunters and so on. So they would sh shoot down the, the enemy for, for, from a far distance. But multi tactic is when you separate the the, the, the big lines that the Soviets formed while they were marching through those narrow areas, you would cut them off and then you would eliminate those small pockets that you cut off from, from the rest of the army. And uh, they would also attack the Finns. Uh, the Finns would attack the Soviets constantly. So the, the Soviets would get tired and uh, they wouldn't push... So, so, technically, they would try to demotivate the Soviets. And, yeah. Maybe a little over 300,000 men. And were equipped with only outdated artillery and machine guns, with the exception of the Finnish-made Suomi submachine gun that was a serious weapon. The Russians, for their part, did not even bother to send their best troops, using just what was available in the Leningrad region. Even so... Yeah. Against such a small nation, Stalin wanted only a quick war and ordered General Kirill Meretskov, the commander of the Leningrad military district, to conquer Finland in a few weeks. Meretskov planned to do it by Stalin's birthday, December 21st. And yes, I'm aware that that date is slightly disputed. <laughs> you never know with Stalin. Meretskov would make a two-pronged attack to break the Mannerheim defense line. One force heading straight over the Karelian Isthmus, and another force making a wide swing around Lake Ladoga to outflank the Finnish. In the far north, beyond Lake Ladoga, the Soviet forces marched into nightmarish conditions. They were neither equipped nor trained to fight in the Arctic climate. They were not even camouflaged for the snow, nor were there tanks. The terrain was some of the densest yeah, that was one of the, the bigger problems for the Soviet Union.
because their army so it was winter and everything was white except the russian army so the tanks and the soldiers who were visible for from uh, for a, uh, from afar but the finnish soldiers were actually and of course the 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 soviet soldiers uh, didn't have warm jackets and so on so they would freeze more easily also uh, uh, in that climate but the Finnish army was equipped with white uh, jackets, so they would be practically invisible. And as I said, they were good sharpshooters, so they would just drive with the ski with the skis, uh, kill one or two of the Soviet troops, and then retreat. And one of the um, uh, the, the famous, most famous snipers of all time. Uh, with I think he's uh, with the most confirmed kills in history actually is uh, the Finnish guy from from this war called uh, Simo Heiha 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 I'm sorry Finnish people who are watching but he I'm not sure how many he uh, he uh, how many of his kills were confirmed but he was like one of the example how efficient the, the the Finns were in this war. This forest in the entire world with snowdrifts between the trees deeper than a man standing. The area lacked adequate infrastructure and the troops were confined to the roads which they had to follow in long columns. They were perfect targets for Finnish ambushes. Small platoons of Finns on skis or snowshoes wearing winter yeah. camouflage constantly harassed the Soviet troops, raided their supply columns and operated behind the lines. The Soviet command structure at this time had political commissars issuing orders and not just military men, which made it very unwieldy and the troops had been ordered not to withdraw no matter what. This led to the soldiers being isolated by the Finns uh, and also a big difference uh, and why the Soviets were so ineffective in the first stages of the operation was because of the military hierarchies. So the Finns, uh, so the smaller Finnish uh, army group, so smaller like two, three men groups had more freedom to do some, uh, you know, like action if they saw uh, that they could jump somewhere in and so on uh, but in the soviet army you needed to wait for an order from the general to to come all the way down so that you were allowed to march somewhere so 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 the finnish army was way way more flexible in that term into small pockets in a hostile territory the finns called the pockets moftis the Mofti. word for stacked firewood like how the Soviet soldiers were huddled together in defensive positions in freezing temperatures with barely any food through the long nights of northern Finland. Moti techniques were snipers and mortar teams harassing the trapped soldiers and depriving them of sleep while stragglers, firewood gatherers and supply columns were picked off one by one. Slowly but steadily, those Moti shrunk as the Russian soldiers starved or froze to death until they were weak enough for assault companies to finish them off. This had the added bonus. Uh, an interesting thing that the Finns also did uh, was uh, because of the freezing temperature, uh, when they uh, eliminated an enemy, uh, the, the body would instantly freeze in the cold. So I don't know, in 10 minutes or something like ridiculous like that. And then they would drag the bodies from that position and put it somewhere where they knew that another Russian battalion would come by. So the new army reserves from, from Russia, that from Leningrad that came to invade Finland, they would see bodies, frozen Russian bodies just standing like this in, in, in the way. Very interesting. The, the use of uh, psychology in this war. Preserving ammunition, salvaging the Russian weapons, and winning without costly direct engagement.
the Finnish defenses of the Mannerheim line were strong. And that, together with the knowledge of the terrain and with having skilled NCOs trained in small group tactics, they could outmaneuver the Soviets even heavily outnumbered. But they still lacked adequate weapons, especially weapons to deal with the Soviet tanks. And One then, way was to sneak up to a tank cocktail. and throw an explosive cocktail of gasoline, kerosene, and tar at it, hoping to ignite the machinery. They named it the Molotov Cocktail after the Soviet foreign minister. He had said that the Soviet bombers would only drop food supplies, not bombs. When bombs were, in fact, dropped, they were called Molotov bread baskets. Molotov cocktails had, in fact, been used earlier in the Spanish Civil War, yep. but it was here they got their name. Yeah, that's uh, also a, let's call it fun fact, uh, that the Molotov cocktail was actually invented in during the Spanish War, uh, and not in Finland, but they gave it the name. Like with America, Christopher Columbus discovered America, but America gained the name America because of Amerigo Vespucci, but... Just a quick side note. Finnish humor did indeed spoil Russian hopes for a quick victory. Soviet high command grew frustrated with the lack of progress, but this came to a large degree from insufficient skills in organization and coordination between the Russian forces. Even though they had a big advantage in armor, artillery, and aircraft, they could not combine arms efficiently. The more mobile Finns could thus react to each threat separately and concentrate their small forces on where the Soviets had... Yeah, imagine, imagine this. ...to each threat separately and concentrate their... Imagine you're fighting against someone like this who you can barely see 100 uh, meters from you. And, he, and somebody from somewhere is shooting at you. It's the, this war is really, really interesting. Because also... Uh, this war showed all the weaknesses of the Soviet Union because everybody in the world was saying, yeah, the Soviet Union has such a big army, tanks and whatever. But this war actually showed that, uh, uh, showed a lot of weaknesses uh, from the Soviet Union and which also indirectly motivated uh, uh, Germany to, to invade the Soviet Union small forces on where the Soviets attack next. Throughout December 1939, the Finns consistently and devastatingly defeated the Red Army. But in the long run, they could not hope to beat the entire USSR's military. Help from other nations was often promised but rarely delivered, though volunteers from all around the world arrived and in many cases fought. With Semyon Timoshenko and Georgi uh, the most help, as I, as far as I know, the most help that the Finns received was from the Swedes. So Sweden was officially neutral during the whole Second World War and uh, uh, also neutral during the, 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 the Winter War. But as th there are a lot of uh, um, family relations between Finns and Swedes and a lot of businesses and i think that in 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 finland there is also a small uh, swedish like minority or something like that but actually a lot of volunteers from sweden i don't know how but the number is in thousands but a lot of um uh, swedish volunteers joined the finnish army to also fight on their side against the, the Soviets. Zhukov, now in charge, as 1940 began, the Red Army underwent a period of retraining for winter war and using combined operations. By mid-February, the Mannerheim line was broken, and in the early, early hours of March 13, 1940, Finland and the USSR signed the treaty that ended Talvisota. Talvisota. Yeah, the problem with, with, the, uh, with the early stages of the war, the Russians attacked uh, on the whole front. So they attack, attacked uh, uh, on the, uh, on the uh, whole border with Finland. 
uh, although the initial plan was just to break with to go in with all the troops uh, and just to break the Mannerheim line and and like in one small pocket uh, but eventually they decided to switch the tactic and to attack like to concentrate their forces on one point and pressure that one point and uh, break that one point. And they the Soviets succeeded. gained all the concessions they had asked for and more, but at what cost? The Finns had lost some 25,000 killed and maybe another 50,000 wounded, over 2% of their population in just 105 days. But the Soviets had taken over 200,000 casualties according to their own estimate, but they may have had as many as 250,000 men killed. So 25, uh, just imagine that, that the, just compare the numbers. 25,000 casualties plus approximately 50,000 injured. So it's 75,000 compared to 200 to 250,000 casualties and we don't even know how many were wounded not even counting the wounded the winter war was a serious blow to soviet pride and the outside world now believed the ussr to be just a paper tiger this uh, yeah, paper would heavily tiger. influence hitler's decision to soon wage war against the soviets yep. and would also influenced Finland's decision to fight on Germany's side in the continuation war. Britain and France had so cynically tried to prolong the winter war for their own agenda, having an excuse to land troops in Norway to prevent iron supplies to Germany, and yet not providing real assistance at all, that Finland lost all trust in the Allies. They had truly fought and for a time beat and beat badly one of the mightiest nations on earth with an army that in many ways was just homemade. Homemade. Nokia. Uh, one thing, um, Nokia was from Sweden or, nah, Finland. Uh, but okay. Um, one thing also, yeah. In the end, eventually, because of the, the, the Soviet aggression, when when the Germans started the Operation Barbarossa, so the invasion of the Soviet Union, the Finns actually then joined the Germans. Why? Because they wanted their territories back that they lost to the Soviets during the Winter War. So Karelia in some of the northern or northeastern parts of, of, of Finland. And... But yeah, after the Second World War ended, like, you can see how Finland is shaped today. Uh, that eventually Karelia and the Northeast territories of Finland are still part of, of Russia. Now, you mentioned Sisu at the beginning. Yes. What is Sisu? Well, I guess it's a mentality Finns have, resilience, hardiness, and it's uh, quite impressive, actually. Well, I mean, you can't, you cannot... Once again, remember, Sisu and Motti. Fought them for their bravery in nope. the Winter War. Absolutely Nobody not. Nobody can do that. And that's interesting, because Finland, you know, their national character, I mean, everything's a generalization, but that Sisu mentality, and there's also the heavy metal thing, too. Yeah, you know? actually, one of the few places in the world where heavy metal is not a small subgenre, you know? It, it's, it's not the yeah. extra thing that the No, no, no. I to. mean, there are metal bands, Finnish metal bands, that will whip Madonna off the charts, you know, if they release an album. That's pretty cool. <laughs> so all you metal bands out there in the world, go to Finland. Yeah, get your asses over there. But you guys, how often do you guys play in Finland? Uh, not enough. <laughs> yeah, but it's so close to, to Sweden. Yeah. yeah, and it took us a while to get there as well. I mean, I think we'd been going on for like eight or nine years as a band before we actually made it to Finland. Wow. Which is kind of weird because we'd been, you know, all over Europe at that point. But and not to the Finland. boat to Finland is so easy. Yeah. You know? Well, that's the first time that we really hung out after the planning session was on the... On, on the, the boat. boat to Finland. Yes, yeah. on the boat to Finland. Like, John F. Kennedy comes back, here's a gun, look, take it, <laughs> in, take, take it to you, take it to you, man. On the boat to Finland, they serve a lot of cocktails. Oh, yes, they do. Now, you <laughs> have a special cocktail. Yes, a very, very special one. Uh, one served for Mr. Molotov, actually. 
one of the actual original Molotov cocktails from the Winter War. Yes. Um, that was not exploded or something. It was made from these Yalovina bottles. I think that's fantastic. Well, wow. with the whole Yeah, we have a lot of stuff like that in our uh, rehearsal space. I guess we'll bring it for the show sometime, some stuff. Talvisolta, The Winter War, is on the album The Art of War. And that's all for today, my friends. But we will see you next time on Sabaton History. Yeah, regarding that, yeah, uh, like the, the Nordic countries or, or yeah, the, 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 the Scandinavian countries and Finland uh, are known for their love for metal music and metal bands. So in Europe, they're known for it. Um, but yeah, let's go, let, let's go back into the topic. This is really an interesting topic. A war that lasted for three months and that had so many consequences to it with territory uh, and casualties and international politics, international uh, reputation and so on. Uh, the it's fascinating how, how the how the Finns uh, defended themselves from the Soviets uh, and how efficient they were in trading casualties. Uh, so yeah, uh, let's r wrap this up. Uh, so thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoyed and that you learned something new. Uh, if you have and if you want to watch another reaction video. Uh, or you have some ideas for a reaction video as once again, please put it in the comment section below, subscribe, hit the ring thingy. And, um, uh, if you want to support the channel a little bit financially to put one, two bucks, uh, you can go to the Patreon page. It's going to be in the description below and yeah, see ya.